Hello friends, in this video we will discuss about the remaining principles of tooth preparation. So the next principle is retention and resistance. Retention prevents removal of the restoration along the path of insertion or long axis of the preparation. Retention is primarily provided by two opposing walls of a restoration or which type of retention is present in cases of intracoronal restorations like inlays. Resistance prevents dislodgement of the restoration by forces directed in the apical or oblique direction and prevents any movement of the restoration under occlusal forces. Retention and resistance are interrelated and often inseparable qualities. So there are various factors which affect the retention and resistance form. First is taper. Taper is defined as the convergence of two opposing external walls of a tooth preparation as viewed in a given plane. A taper diamond burr will impart an inclination of 2 to 3 degrees to any surface it cuts. If the shank of the instrument is held parallel to the intended path of insertion of the preparation, Theoretically, the most retentive preparation should be one with parallel walls. So if we try to give a small taper, then it might result into an undercut. And if the taper is very large, then this results into lack of retention. In this graph, you can clearly see as the degree of taper increases, then the retention decreases significantly. Next factor is surface area. Retention is directly proportional to the surface area. So if the crown height is same, then the retention will be greater with a molar crown than a premolar crown. Next factor is length. Occlusal gingival length is an important factor in both retention and resistance. Longer preparations will have more surface area and will therefore be more retentive because the axial wall occlusion to the finish line interferes with the displacement the length and inclination of that become factors in resistance to tipping forces retention is improved by geometrically limiting the numbers of path along with a restoration can be removed from the tooth preparation a short over tapered preparation would be without retention because the restoration could be moved along an infinite number of paths. Then substitution of internal features. The basic unit of retention for a cemented restoration is two opposing axial walls with a minimal taper. Generally, internal features such as grooves box form and the pin hole are interchangeable and can be substituted for an axial wall or for each other. These are indicated in cases of over tapered preparations, partial linear crowns and when two opposing walls are absent. The path of insertion is an imaginary line along which the restoration will be placed onto or removed from the preparation. It is of special importance when preparing teeth to be fixed partial denture abutments since the paths of all the abutment preparation must parallel to each other. The path of insertion must be considered in two dimensions, facio-lingually and mesiodistally. Here you can see if the uh, preparation is not parallel enough, then we can compensate it by increasing the length of preparation crown uh, or by adding other compensatory factors like grooves, box or pins. If the length is not adequate, then we can increase the retention by maintaining the parallelism or by increasing the surface area or by adding compensatory factor like pins or if 
the surface area is an inadequate then we need to modify our preparation in such a way that we end up with an increased surface area or we can add compensatory factors like grooves fox or fins next factor is structural durability a restoration must contain a bulk of material that is adequate to withstand the forces of occlusion this bulk must be confined to the space created by the preparation now occlusion reduction is very important <laughs> in case of inadequate occlusion reduction we end up with inadequate bulk of material while doing occlusion reduction we must follow the occlusion anatomy in order to gain enough space for the material so if we are giving a gold alloy crown then the uh, then the functional cusp reduction should be 1.5 mm and in case of non functional cusp reduction must uh, should be 1 mm for metal ceramic restorations 1.5 to 2 mm reduction of functional cusp and 1 to 1.5 mm reduction of non functional cusp should be done and for all ceramic restorations an overall reduction of 2 mm is required an internal part of the ocular reduction is the functional cusp bevel a wide wide bevel on the palatal inclines of the maxillary palatal cusp and the buccal inclines of mandibular buccal cusp provide space for adequate bulk of metal in an area of heavy occlusal contact in case cross bite is present then the uh, buccal cusp of maxillary teeth and lingual cusp of mandibular teeth should be considered as a functional cusp coming to the axial reduction axial reduction also plays an important role in securing space for an adequate thickness of restorative material uh, this sorry if the reduction is not adequate then this results in over contour restorations which is not good for oral health next is marginal integrity the restoration can survive in the biological environment of the oral cavity only if the margins are closely adapted to the cavo surface finish line of the preparation unbevelled preparations have an even perpendicular marginal discrepancy because the angle of the margin is around 90 degree in bevel preparations the marginal discrepancy decreases from d to d2 because the angle of the margin is reduced theoretically if theta decreases to 0 degree the marginal discrepancy will also decrease to 0 next principle is preservation of periodontia the placement of finish lines influences the fabrication of the restoration and the final outcome of the treatment the finish lines should be placed in an accessible region so that the margins of the restoration can be easily finished by the dentist and effectively cleaned by the patient the finish lines should be such that it can be reproduced in the impression it should also facilitate the easy removal of the impression without any tear or deformation the finish line should be in enamel whenever possible most preferable finish line is a supragingival finish line subgingival finish line predisposed to periodontitis the finish line should be at least 3 mm away from the alveolar crust to preserve the periodontia restorations with even the slightest discrepancy in marginal fit encourages the retention of bacterial plaque and food debris pathologic pocket depth is more commonly found adjacent to teeth restored with crowns having subgingival margins and the aesthetic considerations the restorative dentist should develop skill in determining the aesthetic expectations of the patient however care must be taken that aesthetic considerations are not pursued at the expense of a patient's long term oral health or functional efficiency at the initial examination it is important to make a full assessment of the appearance of each patient noting 
Which areas of which teeth show during smiling, talking and laughing? So for all ceramic restoration, minimum 1 to 1.2 mm material thickness is required, which limits its use on the facial thin teeth and teeth with large pulp chambers. For metal ceramic restorations, minimum 1.5 mm porcelain thickness is required and color matching is very important. The labial surface of anterior teeth should be prepared in two distinct planes. 2 mm incisal reduction is required. Patients, in cases of patients with high lip line, a subgingival margin should be given. In patients with low lip line, a supragingival margin with metal collar can be given. So if you like this video then please share it with your friends and subscribe to our channel and in the end thank you for watching.